Kirill. Wait, is that Gilbert? Oh, is this when this is their first introduction? We're picking up from that scene with the brother. She, wow, wow, okay. And already a rift between the two brothers shown through Violet. So it's a Buki. Buki. That sounds like a man who's spent a lot of time and energy justifying the things that he's done. Who are you trying to convince, Gilbert's brother? That said so much with so little. There's just so much happening at once. Like, for one, their ideology sort of come into play, it seems. Not to villainize the brother, I feel like it's probably a really common way to think. That you might almost have to think when you've been involved in a war for just years upon years upon years where it's hard not to just let things slide. Put things into neat conceptual categories that help you function and do what you need to do to survive. And that probably includes things like evaluating people and things by how much they'll help you towards your cause, but also justifying things that you otherwise or normally would feel are, are terrible, but just can't function in the world without letting some of those things go because it would be too painful. For that matter, I feel like hate is a really powerful tool and it's hard not to use it when you have it, you know? There's a weird kind of strength in that kind of simplification and categorization. At first, it's kind of like with, with muscles that some rigidity helps strength. It might not necessarily be the healthiest thing overall, but if your task is to do this particular motion and this particular motion only, flexibility might actually hurt you. So you can imagine in very severe situations or where people are very fixated on, on a certain outcome or methodology, either for their own survival or because the stakes are too high for them or they don't know any other way, you can use sort of oversimplistic thinking to get an edge. It's just that it's probably not good for the whole. It's probably not sustainable long term. And it's not the, the highest, most truthful form of of thinking that there is. And I think that generally people have some inkling of that. You know, a lot of it is them trying to convince themselves. I mean, that's how that scene felt to me, for instance. You know, the brother, I don't know, I just to give him the benefit of the doubt, I don't think he'd, he would otherwise be looking at children as just tools for war, right? But that's just the, the lane he's going to go down right now because that's the life he, he's living in. But that's part of what makes Gilbert's reaction so powerful because he didn't do that. He's not calcified in that way. He just took her in. He immediately saw that she was a child and tried to care for her. But then also, interestingly, that's probably exactly what the brother wanted. It seems like he's he might have been counting on Gilbert's compassion and is even using it against him. Light in church lift, Department of the Navy. Remember the days when we were, you know, just in the office writing simple letters? Before we opened up the rivers of heartbreak and started assaulting Navy officers. We never saw what happened in their first interaction, or I mean, the cliffhanger interaction they had where he sort of confronted her about the things she's done, all the burning. Please elaborate more on that cliffhanger that I never got to see the end of. But this actually is one thing that unites them. This is something they have in common. I'm sure the brother also cared about Gilbert, just in a strange, detached way. Not true, not true. That's another thing I was going to say. I feel like people who live in that world or people who are trying to use that kind of emotional sleight of hand on themselves in order to get them through difficult things are threatened by people who are able to cope and thrive without doing that. It sort of threatens to un unravel the things they have going for them. And those are sometimes the only things they have going for them. I mean, maybe the brother having to think that Violet Evergarden was more than just a, a t doll or a toy to his brother would expose to himself just how callously he treated her. And, and also probably a lot of other things he did terribly wrong during the war by extension that are similar enough to come to mind. There's also some potential for jealousy there. Only the truth that we should have told her in episode one, to be honest. That may be true. You, I mean, you could have like been a little more supportive after telling her. I don't know. I mean, you really should have told her from the beginning. Now she's just on a on a one woman quest to like I don't know, try to cope with her grief that there's just no coping with right now. I wonder what her upbringing actually was. That she ended up like this wild wolf. And I wonder how much of this she remembers or like how present it is in her mind as she's going about her days as a as a memory doll. The one person to show her kindness? Well, that won't ever change. And also, she's not just a toy or a tool. 
It seems like this, yeah, this wasn't just the brother, this is just the ethos of the day. Wow, wow, you had to be that direct, huh? Really playing your hand. Joke's on you, I will use her as a tool of war. And I'll care for her at the same time. That'll show you. And then we just throw in Violet Evergarden, and that will take care of that. Who would win in a fight? Violet Evergarden or Thorkel? <laughs> it's across the two shows I'm watching. I've been waiting for this episode for, for a very long time. We get that one little flash fit in the first episode of her wartime. I guess Violet herself is reliving these memories as she sort of discovers the truth of his death. Did use her. Here we go. Damn. Damn, Violet. Oh my god. Maybe Thorfinn's a better better comparison than Thorkel. I mean, he sort of crossed the key line there too. You know, he, he talked a big game, but here we are using her as a tool of war. <laughs> Damn, it's so it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre after seven episodes of Violet Evergarden character development, watching her just shred people up on the battlefield. It's unbelievable. He's not. He's, he's not there, Violet. He's not there. He, she knows he's not there. He's not. No. The no body thing is sort of weird. Like. All signs point to him being gone, as in deceased, but I don't know which is worse, to be honest. Would you rather have hope, or would you rather have closure? We can be both. <laughs> we can be a tool and have a personality and be cared for, I guess. What? What is, what is this girl seeing? She's been through some unbelievable levels of trauma, obviously. And he taught her how to read? Oh, right, right, right. And right, that's right. That's central to her auto memory doll thing. And I'm like guessing this is her first amount of kindness ever, her first experience with people caring for her. She's giving her attention, not just seeing her as purely a tool. Maybe this is in some way Gilbert's way of assuaging his. Guild a little bit, you know, she's fighting in the war, he's gone along with it, but at least he can set her up with some kind of a future, maybe, if she survives. Which he did, actually. You know, I, I assumed that their relationship was romantic in nature, but so far I'm not really seeing it that much. I mean, it doesn't mean it's not there, it doesn't mean it wasn't possible, but from what I've seen so far, it just seems like Major Gilbert was very compassionate and just saw, like, a kid who could really stand to gain from some compassion and care. Could feelings have developed from there? Of course because there's a lot of paths to romantic attraction. And for some people, it's wanting to be caregivers, feeling a sense of responsibility towards someone, having things in common, right? So I know there's a lot of controversy in the show with dating and age, but well, I think it's possible that this was romantic or I think it could have happened at some point and I would have no problem with that. I'm not really seeing it up to this point. It just seems more like, I don't know, he's just being solid, trying to mitigate his guilt a little bit, perhaps, realizing that he's sort of perpetuating the same thing, but I guess doing what he can to help her out in the meantime. It's not a good look. Now the one sort of like looming fear for me is did Violet Evergarden play any role in Gilbert's disappearance or death? Oh, is this when he bought her the brooch or brooch or whatever that is? The swirly gem? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, what she wants is what he's already providing. Just, you know, a world, just someone, anything beyond just, I don't know, orders. This is like feelings ground zero in the first scene of the show. If I remember correctly. Wow, 
<笑>知りませんでした。What?。もうで、どうやって言うのかな。知りませんが、詳細の瞳は出会った時から美しいです。What <laughs> Custom complete this is obviously weighing on him quite a, quite a bit. And he's going to be encumbered now. Speaking of, you know, how sometimes it's counterintuitive, you know, like caring more, thinking more, being more understanding, more compassionate can feel like a weakness at times, especially when it might slow you down or make you hesitate or just give you a bunch of conflicts that you otherwise just didn't have to deal with. You know, now they're they're continuing to fight. They're going into other battles. And now he's got just something ex extra, something else to be attached to and worry about and feel responsible for. But I don't know. On net, questions of survival aside, I think it's better to be struggling under the complexity of truth than coasting along this illusion of simplicity. It'll catch up to you one way or the other. And it also is deeply unsatisfying. You know, I mean, you know when you're deluding yourself on some level, even if it's a sub subconscious thing. And to, to confront that sort of richness and depth of human experience and trial and tribulation means there's a chance that you'll master it. You know, it means there's a chance that you'll, you'll rise above it and really kind of meet yourself and meet life and meet the fullness of other human beings. This is a really weird comparison to make, but actually Kaguya-sama comes to mind because we see in the flashback of their freshman year that Kaguya is just having a great, great time and is coasting and is super charismatic and Miyuki sort of struggling with his place in the world and it's a great scene because we also know the present day as well and we know that their situations sort of reverse over time and part of the reason why it reverses is that Miyuki is rising to meet it he's struggling with it he's pushing himself and growing and not giving up whereas Kaguya sort of lives in this illusory land of safety that is actually quite fragile when when it, you look at it so this feels like an awakening for for Gilbert though it's you know not where it started he seems to have already been you know kind of along that path to begin with, where he had certain natural tendencies. And here we go into battle. Western Front. I'm dreading whatever tragedy that's gonna happen that Violet was involved in. Oh no, they're talking about going home. Never do that. Never do that. There's Claudia. Oh, is that how he made it out? I bet he has a lot of guilt about that. I have a protege slash future girlfriend. Okay, Mikasa. And Monday he'll be your your male boss. The very same. She is burning. Oh wow, very direct. But I mean, Gilbert's gonna take that very poignantly because he already feels that. And he feels terrible about it. I heard that male is hot on the streets right now. Everyone likes male. It's a super glamorous position. I wonder if Gilbert's thinking like he's just going to take the brunt of this immorality that he feels, you know. I'm just a bad person, but what can you do? If it's for victory, if there's any chance at winning, we must take it. It seems partly like he's trying to do that whole thing just to mask his own guilty conscience, soothe his own guilty conscience. Maybe he's afraid to face her after, you know, actually trying to use her as an instrument in his in his goals, in the war's goals. Yeah, it's interesting how she does sort of feel innocent just by the ver by the fact that she doesn't understand it, even though she's doing some pretty awful things herself. And then we send in Violet Evergarden, and that's that. Is this actually what ended up winning the war, though? No expression. No remorse. Just cold killing machine T-1000. Lady T-1000. Did she just get shot? This scene is so well done. It, I don't know. They're just huddled around a wall, but it feels so intense. And they're side by side. Something's wrong, yeah. That went bad so quick. Oh, he's hit. He got hit. And he probably knows from, from then on out. It's That's it for him. Damn, this is some real, like, Cowboy Bebop gunfight vibes.
They actually just won the war. I didn't realize how central of a role they played. That's sort of insane. What a- Whoa, what the hell? And then total blackout. I guess that's when Violet went total blackout crazy. I'm guessing that's probably when she also injured her own soldiers. Because the Major is the one person kind of tying her to a life that isn't like this crazy wild robot animal doll. This savage life that she lived before. Without him, maybe it's just a reversion all the way back to that state. I can see how just, you know, from a narrative perspective, watching that happen to him right as they achieve victory would flip a switch, and that would be it. This was an insane episode. I've been waiting for a very long time for this. The show previews this in the first episode, but then it's a lot of like really emotional, sort of sensitive, softer touch stuff. But we knew this was in here, and this is the episode, and I'm guessing it's gonna be a two-parter. And I'm also guessing that's gonna set up a really, really big thing for Violet to have to confront as the series starts to come to an end in the last couple episodes.